Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to have a look at this drawing of Troy Palamalu. You know, the drawing process can often be unpredictable even to the artist himself. It can take you where you didn't expect initially. So when I received a commission to draw Troy, I only had a rough idea about what it was going to look like based on my customer's request. I knew that it was going to be a compound drawing consisting of two elements, a large portrait and a smaller full body figure. It was also suggested that the full body drawing should be done in color with him standing in his full gear. So I took it from there and decided to take some liberties. First, I changed the orientation from horizontal, uh, which was my original idea, to the vertical. So that was the first change. Then I thought, why not make the full body picture a bit more dynamic? Because I love movement. So I picked a shot of him making an interception and diving for the ball. And finally, as for the colors, I decided that it would be better not to do the whole body uh, in color, but to limit the color to yellow where it appears on the Steelers jerseys, so that the whole drawing is black and white with a touch of yellow in the right places, and that it kind of matches the Steelers colors, which are black, white and gold. So, you know, when you're drawing it's okay to do regular portraits and it's okay to do regular stuff when you don't have uh, any new or uh, unusual idea but w when you do have an idea uh, and when you do have an opportunity to do something creative or unusual or special I think you should seize it now we are going to have a look at the drawing progression in detail I'm going to start working on his hair and there's my reference photo in the top right corner it was a very large high-res photo so perfect for such a large portrait and by the way the size of the paper was around 11 times 15 inches or so I'm using a fairly sharp woodless charcoal pencil as you can see and now I decided to tackle that task of drawing his large and curly hair which is a daunting task but I'm going to show you later how you can simplify it here I decided to uh, make a short break from drawing the hair because I only started working on the outline and some of these flyaway hairs on the edges and I did a little bit of work on the eyes again I'm making sure that my charcoal pencil is really sharp for this I want to put in these darker areas first and then I can start blending around them you can see a couple of nice highlights in the eye and I'm going to have to shade all around them so that they would really stand out. I'm doing a little bit of cross hatching and a tapered using a tapered stroke uh, just to put in some of the initial shading to give myself a rough idea about the shape of the face and the amount of value that I'm going to be using in certain places even though at this point it's kind of difficult for me to gauge that's why I'm putting in these darkest areas and that'll be my reference as to how dark how dark I need to go so I'm shading around the eyes and the eyebrows I made that area a little bit darker and now on the forehead and around the forehead as well again I'm putting down this dark area where the hair is and that's going to serve two purposes obviously it's going to bring me closer to uh, doing the hair and completing the hair but also it will help me uh, assess how much value I need on the forehead and the rest of the face so once I have these darkest areas in place it's a little bit easier for me to start shading uh, the face uh, because I, I'm more, more comfortable 
because I have a clearer idea about how much value I need in certain places. And you can see how nicely these highlights in the eye or these reflections in the eye stand out now that I shaded the rest of the eyeball. Always remember that the eyeball is a round object so you have to shade it as a round surface. So generally the area that is closest to, to us or the, to the light source is lighter and these areas which are closer to the corner of the eyes are darker. I'm going to put in a few darker lines around the other eye as well. With such a large and daunting portrait it's a good idea to work on the things that that'll kind of uh, help you speed up the process and putting in some of these larger details and darker details really helps a lot. You see I made the uh, eyeball on the other eye a little bit too dark so I had to take away a little bit of that value. So it's a good idea to shade it by you have to keep you have to be careful not to shade it too much. Anyway moving on to this large mass of hair you can see how carelessly I'm covering all of this, but there's a pattern to this madness, as you can see. I'm doing a circular motion and then covering that with a brush. And even though I will blend it in, you will see that a lot of that frizzy texture will still remain. And that's kind of what I want, because really it's impossible for me to imitate the appearance of the hair by drawing each individual hair, especially with a large and curly hair like this. So what I need to do instead is try to imitate the texture by allowing the pencil to work for me. And the pencil will naturally produce some texture and I will blend it, but I will want to remove, uh, but I will want to keep some of the texture. I'm sorry about this background noise, but I wanted to show you this part in real time uh, because this is where the magic starts to happen. Now that I've put in the darkest areas of his hair, I can start working on the highlights and I can start giving some more structure and depth to that hair. So I can start to pull, pull out some of these individual highlights and some of these individual curls. And I'm using a pencil eraser. This is a Kohinoor pencil eraser, which can be sharpened, as you can see. And I'm using it as I would a pencil. But here's the thing. Uh, to really make the most out of it, you have to vary the amount of pressure. Because uh, I only, I'm only going very lightly over certain areas to get some lighter highlights and then on top of those uh, we'll go in with a cleaner eraser with a little bit more pressure and these lighter highlights uh, will make it look like they're on top of on top of the other ones so that'll create an illusion of depth in our hair like we have some curls which are overlapping with the others if that makes sense Basically, I want to give that hair a more 3D look. Like you can almost feel like some curls, like some parts of it stand out. And also, I forgot to mention about the out outer edge of the hair. I uh, Again, I can't draw every single individual hair, which is why I use my blending tools to kind of soften uh, the outer edge. With just a few flyaway hairs here and there, but I soften it with a... Uh, blending tool to give it a little more volume and density because like I said I can't draw every single hair. Here I'm working a little bit more on the jersey and um, because a charcoal pencil isn't always a very precise and accurate tool I'm cleaning it up using my erasers and tortillions and I'm also going to be using a black color pencil as well if I need it to clean up these edges because I want the clean edges there. Anyway, a few more hairs on the top of his head and then I'm moving on to the 
forehead trying to put in a little more shading and a little more texture there again uh, like with the hair I am not a fan of photorealism I don't like to draw every single dot or every single line and with the face I'm not going to draw every single pore instead I'm going to try to make the pencil work for me and try to produce some texture and use that texture to imitate the appearance of the skin by shading the larger areas and establishing the larger relationship between areas of darker and lighter value is far more important obviously because if I don't do that then the face won't look realistic and it certainly uh, will fail to achieve likeness so that's my priority here obviously I have to make it look like the person that I'm drawing and uh, the appearance of the skin and the texture of the skin is not quite as important although I will as you can see work on that a little bit later another way to work on the texture of the skin is by using a pencil eraser you can also create some additional texture and also you can use it to pull some highlights on the face as well like I did here on the tip of the nose and around the eyebrows and on the forehead and some other places I, I'm mostly done with the eyes and the eyebrows but like I said I will be going back and forth adding some more detail, some more texture and maybe some additional shading because I'm often all over the place when I'm drawing portraits and I often go back to a certain area to add a little more value or to take away a little bit of value if I feel like uh, that needs to be done. Now notice how uh, the teeth look big and how much they're sticking out before you start shading them. It looks kind of unnatural. But once I start shading them, uh, they will start to look a lot better. And I will also have a couple of highlights in the teeth as well some reflections there as well so again in order for those to make to stand out like the ones in the eyes I will need to shade the teeth and to create enough value around those highlights so that they would stand out so normally when we look at details like teeth or eyeballs we think these are white but they're not exactly white when they're in the shadow um, they are getting a lot less light and they need to be shaded, shaded thoroughly so that they would look realistic and you can see how I reserved some white space for a highlight on the teeth as well and that helps to create more volume in the teeth as well so that they don't look flat so that we feel like these are 3D objects as well like the rest of the face And in general, uh, when you're drawing a portrait, you have to be careful how much of the area you're leaving completely white. Ideally, you should leave only the smallest highlights uh, completely white. You should, you should reserve only very, very small portions of the paper to be completely white and not cover them with any amount of graphite or charcoal or whatever it is that you're working with so in my case only a few very small areas will be completely white on his face like the highlights in his eyes and on the teeth but the rest of it pretty much has been shaded quite thoroughly with a decent amount of charcoal and obviously uh, his chin and the beard and the stubble uh, will is a little bit complex and takes it takes a little bit of patience to put in that stubble so I'm using a combination of uh, just scribbling to produce some texture and uh, drawing actual dots and short lines to imitate short beard So it's kind of like when you're drawing short fur on animals, I guess. I'm using a similar 
approach. I also need to add a few more flyaway ha hairs and curls uh, to make the hair around his face look a little more realistic. So this is what I call a larger portrait because for me that's a larger portrait. I normally work on smaller size paper and this is not only a slightly larger piece of drawing paper but also the face or the portrait is covering a fairly large, large portion of it. And like I said, large portraits, if you've seen my video on drawing large portraits, they carry certain challenges with them because sometimes getting the proportions right can be a little bit difficult. Now moving on to the figure of uh, Troy which is going to be in the lower portion of the of this drawing, the full body uh, figure. But I have to shade around it because there's going to be some lighter areas and if I want them to stand out I have to shade all around and a little bit more of this scribbling to produce that curly texture and then like I said as, as with the left side I just blend it in and then I draw some highlights in it. It sounds simple enough obviously but it takes hours and it takes a lot of practice and patience. Uh, now I'm putting in these yellow areas because like I said at one point I decided that I only want uh, some parts of the jersey to be yellow and because the yellow was kind of mixing with a little bit of charcoal I felt like it was going a little bit too greenish so I added a touch of orange here and there and you will see that once I shade uh, the rest of this figure I will need to use a little bit of brown for some of the darker areas in that yellow. Here I uh, here I shaded around the or rather erased around his hair so that his flying hair would stand out. And of course the top of the helmet needs to be a lot lighter. But right now I'm not too concer concerned with the smallest of details. I'm trying to put in some of the larger parts of the body and then later I will go back in and refine that with a uh, with a black colored pencil because I will need a little more precision so I'm using a combination of charcoal and colored pencil here obviously and the black colored pencil that I'm using is a uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos black colored pencil although you can use any black colored pencil for sketching and drawing these uh, shapes and outlines, I'm doing a, I'm using a graphite pencil, and I use a graphite pencil for my initial sketch as well. But now that that is done, I'm mostly moving in with a black colored pencil and charcoal pencil. Although, like I said, in this situation where we have a small figure, uh, I will tend to prefer a black colored pencil for the sake of precision and to avoid smudging which I don't really like. And by the way there was a ton of smudging in this drawing. I spent a great deal of time cleaning up around the, around the portrait uh, which wasn't recorded on camera but it took quite a bit of time for me to clean it up. <coughs> because when you have such a large amount of dark hair there's obviously and you're working with charcoal there's obviously going to be a lot of residue a lot of that dust and there's going to be a lot of cleaning to be done you can also see them that I'm using a little bit of the yellow colored pencil for cleaning up some of the edges I have to do that because pastel and charcoal can be a little bit difficult to manage and if you want cleaner edges colored pencils definitely help a lot
So like I said, I uh, chose to do uh, to do this uh, drawing because I like movement, so I didn't want him just standing there. And also, uh, now that the drawing is almost done, I'm just putting down some finishing touches around the throat. I needed to do a little bit more shading, and I'm just cleaning up some of the edges and pretty much finishing the drawing and doing a little bit more cleaning uh, now I'm going to sign it here I'm going to sign it more to the right because we have a little bit more stuff to the left so for the sake of balance I'm going to move my signature here to the right I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit so that you can see all of it. So here it is. This is what the drawing looks like. Uh, I had to zoom out quite a bit because obviously uh, the drawing is quite large. So I hope you like this compound drawing of Troy Palomalu. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.